Hello, my name is Sina Mulavipu. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the uh, conditional mutual information neural estimators. Uh, I'm a PhD student at KTH, and this is a joint work with Professor Skuglon and Dr. Bossi, presented for ICASP 2020. The motivation is, uh, of this work is studying uh, conditional mutual information denoted as CMI. Uh, it appears in many applications for characterizing the capacity of communication channels or uh, basis for defining notions such as causal influence. Uh, although there are conventional methods to estimate the CMI, uh, they suffer from the curse of dimensionality. Recent studies suggest neural networks to be used to estimate information theoretic quantities such as mutual information or relative entropy. Uh, the extensions to estimate a CMI is not trivial and is addressed in this uh, work. Uh, CMI can characterize the capacity of communication channels such as relay channel, random state channel, or degraded wiretap channel. The, the secrecy capacity of degraded wiretap channel is represented as a mutual conditional mutual information between X, Y, Q, and Z. And uh, the secrecy capacity means the highest rate that we can achieve, uh, such that we can reliably dec decode M using Y and why it is impossible with uh, ZM. Uh, to formally define conditional mutual information, uh, let's assume we have x, y, z distributed according to p, x, y, z. Uh, then it is the integral of the joint density, p, x, y, z, multiplied by logarithm of the density ratio the, the, of the joint density and the product density, probability of x given z multiplied by probability of y given z. So there, are, there were uh, conventional methods to estimate CMI including parametric estimators, where a model is assumed for the data and we estimate the parameters of the model and accordingly the CMI is computed. Then uh, kernel methods exist uh, that the, density, uh, the densities are computed as sums of kernel functions and, they, and we uh, plug, uh, plug in the, the function into the CMI expression. And partitioning methods where uh, we partition the space and uh, uh, and for each cell, we count the number of samples, uh, and then we derive uh, an, an estimator. There is also uh, another uh, famous estimator known as KNN estimator, or K-nearest neighbor, where the K determines the radius of the ball around a given point in the space that captures all the K-nearest samples to that point. And for mutual information in 2004, uh, Kroskov uh, uh, proposed this uh, estimator and also known as KSG, and in the same uh, line of work in 2017 for conditional mutual information, and they propose an estimator for that. But in recent works uh, based on variational bounds for relative entropy, they have proposed neural estimators, one in 2018 for mutual information, and uh, in the same line of research, for the conditional mutual information in 2019, they have proposed a neural estimator. Um, so what, is, what are the variational bounds? So based, uh, I mean, in the, in these estimators are based on a famous one, which is named Donske Waradan, which was proposed in 1983. It states that the relative entropy of, uh, of P uh, between P and Q is bounded from below with the expectation of Fx with respect to px minus the logarithm of expectation of e to the power fx with respect to qx. A weaker uh, lower bound can be also derived uh, and, and it's conventional to use. It is denoted as nwj bound and uh, it is uh, represented as uh, expectation of p uh, fx with respect to px minus e inverse expectation of e to the power fx with respect to the qx. So we can also define uh, for the conditional mutual information the same uh, lower bounds. So uh, the, uh, based on the Donsky waradon we have the lower bound of expectation of f with respect to the joint density minus the logarithm of expectation of e to the power f with respect to the product density. Note that this uh, bound is tight and we can achieve equality if we choose f to be the logarithm of the density ratio. Similarly for NWJ, we have um, a same lower bound based on the NWJ bound. And uh, it is tied for cho by choosing F to be one plus logarithm of density ratio. 
So uh, the ch there are challenges for estimating CMI. So uh, consider we have n triples x, y, z available, and we want to estimate CMI. So we face with uh, two main challenges. One is that uh, we need to substitute the expectations with empirical or sample averages. So for that, formally, we need a batch of joint uh, and batch of product, which respectively consists of uh, samples that are created from joint density and product density. The second challenge is that we, we need to approximate the density ratio, we call it gamma star, um, uh, because we need it for computing the, uh, the Fs for the tight bound. And we elaborate uh, on these two problems in this work. So to construct the sample batch uh, for the joint batch, it is uh, more trivial. So uh, consider the data set to be represented as a, as a table in this figure. Then we, for creating a batch of size B, simply we take random, uh, randomly B rows of this table and construct the, the joint batch. And each row represents uh, accordingly, according to the joint density. For the product batch, uh, product batch it is more involved. Uh, we use the notion of K nearest neighbor to resample the data set. So assume that, uh, again, the data set is um, represented as a table, and we take uh, m random distinct integers and put them in a set called im. And for each i inside im, uh, let azi uh, be the set of indices of k nearest neighbors of zi in zm. And we put all the triples x, j, y, i, z, i, for i inside i m and j inside a z i. So in this figure, the, 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 the yellow boxes with the star are uh, neighbors of uh, z i and the corresponding x's or the corresponding indices are j0, j1, j2, and we create the, the product batch. But to address the second problem that we have to approximate the density ratio, uh, it, it has been proposed uh, to use the neural classifier uh, let, let it be an omega theta, parameterized with theta, and the input is x, y, z, and uh, we, we want to, uh, so these, these inputs can either come from a joint density or uh, a product density, and we want the neural network to be able to classify between these two densities. Note that the, the output of this classifier is concatenated with a sigmoid function to map the, the output between zero and one. So the last function we choose is binary cross entropy, and uh, which is expressed here, and we call it L of omega theta. And the Q in this um, in this formula is actually the labels we put. To, so zero is for the uh, joint batch, and one is for the product batch. Uh, so it has good property. Uh, the, if we call omega star to be the minimizer of L omega, then it can, the, using omega star we can actually recover the density ratio. So omega star over one minus omega star is the gamma star, which we need. So by minimizing L of omega theta, we can actually re uh, recover the F star and uh, F star for the Donsky Waradon and NWJ bound. Uh, so now we can formally define uh, our uh, neural estimators. So although the all L of omega theta uh, uh, can give us uh, the, the, uh, the the optimal omega, but we don't have this because it, it is based on the expectations and we have to compute it empirically. We call the empirical loss to be L to B of omega theta. And based on the training data batches, we call it a uh, batch of joint and batch of product, we can compute uh, and optimize uh, the parameters. Let's theta hat to be the, the minimizer of L to B, then the gamma hat would be the omega of theta hat over one minus omega of theta hat. And we can now uh, formally define our estimators. So the, the estimator based, based on the Donsky Waradon is represented as the equation above. And note that the expectations that we had previously are substituted with samples, with sample summations. And similarly for the NWJ, we can define the estimator. Note that the estimator of NWJ is unbiased, as you can see. But the, for the Donsky Waradon, it is a biased estimator since we have this log term which uh, arises a, a nonlinearity. The bias problem uh, can get uh, severe because we need, uh, sometimes we need to take several trials and take the, uh, the average. We may need it for cross validation, for instance. So uh, we call this uh, averaged estimations to be our uh, ultimate estimator. Uh, so note that the NWJ estimates a tight lower bound. Uh, with this definition, but the 
the downscale water done, it's, it is not because it's, it's neither actually a lower bound and upper bound due to Jensen inequality because, because of the, the logarithm uh, term that we have in the downscale water done estimator. So let's uh, let's now show some experimental results and uh, consider the, uh, the degraded wiretap channel and uh, with the Gaussian model. So X is the Gaussian input with power, uh, with, uh, power P and uh, a noise would be added to create Y with power sigma 1 squared and another noise would be added to Y to create Z uh, with power sigma 2 squared. And the secrecy, secrecy capacity is expressed as here. Note that we cannot uh, it, we cannot uh, communicate more than the secrecy capacity because then uh, we cannot retain the privacy. So it is important in this case to estimate a lower bound for the CMI. So uh, here I'm, I'm presenting the downscale Waradon uh, for the case of p equal 100, sigma 1 equal 1, and 20,000, and b cho is chosen to be n over 2. And this is for 20 trials. Note that for different k's, we have different curves. And if we increase the k, we can have a better estimation. And the plot is with respect to different choices of sigma 2. So to, now to show uh, what, uh, now to, uh, to have an experiment to show the bias problem, let's assume that the training has been done with the same batches. I mean, B is uh, the uh, same as before, equal to N over two. But now in, in order to compute our estimators, we, we use a, a batch of a smaller size, calling B prime here. And we create these, these box plotters by repeating 50 times each of these um, uh, uh, experiments. So note that uh, for let's say 80,000 samples, for, for 8,000 samples and B prime uh, to be 40, then uh, the, the, the problem of having this bias problem is uh, for the Donsky Warden is severe. In fact, it is uh, more severe than the NWJ. In fact, it gets uh, above the true value for some cases. So uh, if you're uh, estimating the secrecy capacity, this is not acceptable. Also for the 20,000 samples and with batch size 40, again, we see that the Donsky world can, uh, can become uh, above the, the true uh, value. So to summarize, uh, the variational bounds uh, that we reviewed in this paper enabled pr proposing neural estimators and recent works have shown significant improvement that can be achieved using these estimators. And the KNM method for creating the batches shows uh, desirable performance and we see that by increasing the K, we can have an improvement. And if the intention of the estimation is estimating the CMI itself, both downscale Warden and NWJ estimators can be used. But if we need a lower bound for CMI, like the case for estimating a capacity, then the NWJ estimator is a more justified method regarding the bias problem. And as a future direction, we are improving the KNM batch construction and we achieved a better performance comparing to other methods. Uh, thank you.